You know, this opens up a kind of broader conversation that I wanted to have about TYT, because to be honest, TYT is, is one of the reasons why I got into this whole space in the first place, the online left media ecosystem back in 2016, when Bernie Sanders was ascendant, real excitement. Um, TYT was providing something that no other show was straight up. Um, and despite how much they've gone downhill since, I still do to this day miss the setup. I miss the live panel reacting to, you know, Bernie Sanders winning Michigan or, you know, debate night, stuff like that. It was a really good show. And I know if you guys just started paying attention to left online media in the last couple months or even the last year or two, you might be like, really tyt kind of sucks why would you say that you know you, you miss it what uh but trust me if you guys were there at the time um there's a lot more diversity of opinion on the panel you know obviously they had guys like jordan Sheraton and jimmy Dore, who at the time was way less cringe um, it made for a more dynamic and interesting set of viewpoints that interacted with one another bounced off of one another uh, it was a really truly dynamic show uh, again if you guys weren't there at the time you might not understand that um, but it just it just really got me thinking about how much, you know, the show has gone downhill. Specifically, the other day I was revisiting um, the conversation that Jink had with Aaron Mate before we debated Aaron on our show. I decided to uh, revisit Jink's debate with Aaron um, just to kind of you know, reminisce and, and and be like, you know, how much has changed since those days? And this was in 2019. So this wasn't even that long ago. Um, but still, it just struck me how much better the show used to be. Um, it's for so many reasons. For one, uh, in in studio, you know, panels are so, so much better than what they do now. Every once in a while, seemingly, they have a panel discussion uh, in studio. Um, but largely these days, it's all uh, Skyped in from you know remote locations with these shitty backgrounds uh, behind the hosts. Um, and, and again, if you go back and look at this, look how beautifully lit this set is. Look how nice and colorful the background is. I remember watching this show and you know really enjoying the aesthetic quality of it. But obviously, more importantly than that, again, Jank and the crew were seemingly a lot less afraid to have on people with differing viewpoints, with ideological disagreements. I remember they did a, uh, a debate between third party candidates, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson. Again, they were actually programming interesting content that was more uh, exciting and, uh, you know, uh, intellectually engaging, at least to me. Um, and again, just just look at the the quality of the set. The lighting is really good. It's colorful. This is a, a good conversation between two people that obviously disagree on a lot, but it was a great conversation. I remember watching it when it happened. Now you compare that to what the show is like today. Here, let me pull up another clip, uh, just a random one I picked off of their homepage. Um, this one's about anti-abortion zealots. Um, and, and just, I mean, it's just... It's just lame. It's like it, the, the content's not as good. Um, th there's less of a in-person dynamic because obviously they're not in person. They're just talking to each other over Skype. It seems like so much has been lost in translation. Um, and, you know, that might seem kind of a petty or shallow uh, thing to have beef with. Oh, you don't like the backgrounds of the set anymore. But I think it really speaks to the amount of effort that they're putting into the show overall. And, and it just seems a lot lazier. It seems a lot cheaper. Um, and a lot less intellectually engaging, like I said, because they refuse to have on more people with differing intellectual perspectives. And unfortunately, I, I fear that Nina Turner's new show is only going to add to that echo chamber. You know, I've never really seen her and Jank or her and Anna have much of a disagreement. It seems like she basically has the exact same policy agenda, the exact same beliefs as they do, um, just spoken in a, a different cadence. And, you know, frankly, despite the fact that she was a great surrogate for Bernie Sanders, I've never found her commentary to be all of that uh, all that engaging to listen to in the first place. Like I'm not all that interested in listening to an hour of what Nina Turner has to say. It's nothing personal. She seems like a really nice person. She seems like a really good woman. I, you know, have a, I have no issue with Nina Turner. I hope she does well. I wish her the best. Um, I genuinely think she seems like a, a really nice lady. So I don't want to be mean. I don't want to tear anyone down. Um, but I do fear that again, it's just going to be another voice in this echo chamber. That's not really, that's not really like, you know, providing much, intellectual or ideological diversity to engage with, which is what I used to enjoy about the show. So again, all that's to say, it's just a shame that something that used to be so unique has become so watered down. Um, and, and even beyond the sets and the ideological diversity, um, it, it just has lost all of its personality. Uh, LOL at that screenshot of Jink. Um, but I I'm sure you guys remember if you used to watch back in the day, they would curse, you know, they would say the F word, they would get passionate. 
it seems like all that's kind of evaporated. It seems just like a shadow of its former self and to the point that I barely even watch it. Now, this clip is actually a little bit unique in comparison to some of the other recent clips because it actually has Jink and Anna. Uh, a lot of the times when you tune into TYT these days, it's like two or three random people that you've never heard of that have no charisma um, that are you know talking and just repeating talking points that they heard on Twitter, essentially. Um, it's not a very dynamic presentation anymore. And again, half the time when you tune in, it's like two or three random people you've never seen or heard of Skyping in that are just, you know, not really adding much of anything at all to the conversation that's worth listening to. Um, it, it seems like they have, they've had trouble poaching like serious talent. Um, the other shows that they have, like the one with this dude named Dr. Rashad Ritchie or something like that has not ever caught my interest or I have never found it engaging to listen to. Um, so again, you know, a, a lot of people point to the, the, the Katzenberg money, them taking that, uh, that, that uh, investment money as, as why this happened, you know, why the show got so watered down. And I definitely think that's a part of it. You know, corporate money corrupts, corporate money makes things more, uh, you know, it gentrifies things. And that's essentially what happened here to TYT. Um, but yeah, it's just a shame. I actually, I would push back on that a little bit and say that I actually think what happened was is that they were doing really, really well financially. I mean, obviously the Katzenberg money didn't help, right? But what I think would, I would say would explain a lot of this uh, was that they were they were doing really really well financially in the Bernie era. They were selling the whole like watching TYT is activism. They were selling the whole like uh, you know be a part of the revolution by watching our show and giving us money and super chatting and doing all of those things. I mean to over five million people, right? That's a lot. That's a huge audience. And now you can just see um, that they have. Uh, a much like smaller audience, right? They're not blasting out to that many people. These are the kind of numbers that you would see on a channel like Secular Talk or something, right? It's just not enough for a network, right? That's uh, Secular Talk is one guy and it's a successful channel. Like Kyle's does a great job, but you know he's not a network. And when you compare that, uh, what they were trying to do, the scale of everything, right? That requires a lot of funding, right? Uh, and I think that they, you know, they kind of flew too close to the sun. I think it, what happened was, is they, you know, thought that money was going to be forever. And then Jank thinks, okay, great. Let me get that 20 million from Jeffrey Katzenberg and I'm going to take over. I am going to be the definitive news channel on YouTube, right? But what happened was, is uh, the progressive movement lost a lot of stream steam. And so they pivot and they start going more the David Pakman route and they start going the more like, light msnbc route because they need to di differentiate themselves from the jimmy Dore audience because they've been beefing so much and jimmy's been taking audience away from tyt uh, and that's a huge problem for jank because he needs to be the one and only if he's going to be able to uh support this massive you know staff um you know uh, the sets flying people in so that they can have in staff uh, inside on-site conversation so i start to think that you know of course it's easy just to be like tyt got fucking shitty because they took 20 million dollars i have issues with them taking that money because i think it's unethical and i think it compromises their journalistic integrity but i think a bigger part of why the so show is so shitty now is because they took a bunch of blows during covid they scaled everything down jank and anna probably they want to be making as much money as they were when i mean this is corporate america baby they want to be making as much money as they were personally when tyt was raking it in hand over fist right they're not taking pay cuts like you know a show like me and gavin uh, or basically any other show that's like legitimately independent like you ride your waves bro you better like you better be ready for the fucking roller coaster like this ain't for the faint of heart you know what i'm saying uh and so they, they're still their salaries are probably like ink they're like hey we're getting paid this is a business we'll ride this bitch till the wheels come off saving our fucking money getting our money so instead of saying okay you know what we can't afford to make half a million dollars a year or whatever the fuck jank pays himself uh maybe more than that i have no fucking idea i can't even speculate uh, i i imagine it's quite bountiful i've seen the dude do some videos from home anyway um you know, he's saying, all right, I'm not I'm not trimming my salary down. So where else can this money come from? It can come from. Well, guess what? We're not doing camera guys anymore. We're not being in studio anymore. There's no gaffers. There's no union guys. There's nobody that has to come in and do this shit. I'm going to set up uh, my camera that I already know how to operate. Anna's going to set up her camera that she knows how to operate from her house. We're going to have one audio guy and visual guy. We're going to pay him hourly or contractually so we can cut down on funding there. And you just 
dilute the show that way. And it, what it really becomes is, is it's another tale of greed, but it's just a different kind of greed. I imagine that Katzenberg money is gone, and that's part of the problem now, is they don't have that cushion. They need to cut corners. They need to be picking up crumbs. That's why they can't attract big talent, because do you think big talent wants to fucking uh, have their own like HP shitty looking webcam doing their promos, embarrassing themselves? No, of course not. Uh, you know, they want somebody to build a fucking studio in their basement like uh, RT would have done back in the day. Uh, say, we want you to fucking do this. So we're going to make it look awesome. We're going to give you a contract deal. Like that's what if you want to play ball like that with the big leagues then you got to play ball like that with the big leagues. The problem is, is that they can't play ball anymore. They don't have the bread. Um, and and so, you, you know, they're, they're showing the consequences now. Right. And I think also that we have to talk about COVID that that also, you know, was a big reason why they did start doing the show differently. But guys, we, you know, come on, <laughs> come on, guys, we got to get back to normal now. Like there is you got to get back in the studio if you want to if you want to have a compelling show like you used to. At least that's my opinion. That's what most other shows have done at this point. Um, again, it just seems it just seems cheap. It seems lazy. It's a shadow of its former self. And as Addy, the bug catcher says, thank you so much for the five bucks. 2015 to 2016, TYT was epic. They were fun to watch, full of nuance, successful, and played a huge role in Bernie's rise in popularity. That's definitely true. Like I said, used to be a huge fan back in the day. Um, and honestly, I, I wish it would. I wish it would return to its former glory. I wish they would have on more people that had you know differing viewpoints to push back in the echo chamber that has been created there. I wish that there was more panel discussions that are in person. You know, if anything, I, I wish Nina Turner would just become a regular member on the panel and they would go back to doing it in person again I, I just hopefully she proves me wrong i don't think that her new show is going to get very high numbers i don't think that many people are going to tune into it um hopefully i'm wrong you know again i like nina turner um but it just doesn't seem like that's the way it's going to go unfortunately and it seems like they made a lot of poor decisions in that regard so yeah i totally agree with you addy 